have the ribs tied off. Just going to make sure they're secured well. And I make sure it's flat in there and I just kind of push down any little bumps from the tinsel. Make sure it's looking good and I clear the fur out of the way for the throat. Make sure it's really tight wraps with the hackle here. Uh, really want to make sure that they're not loose at all. You don't want that hackle to move around. And this one is pretty close. Really only got one turn right at the throat. Now I kind of pinch it all and really reef down on that stem there and make sure it's tied in nice and tight. It's really difficult when you first start out doing the hackles. Sometimes they work great, other times they're just a real pain, so just figure out a system that'll work for you. Make sure you get any little bits out of the way there. Now I kind of like to clear a way for the wing. I just get the hackles out of the way and rub it with my finger and then that kind of spreads the fibers out so that way you can put your wing on easily there. And now we're going to prepare a throat. That's a rooster body section from Feathers MC. I uh, really like that hackle for throats. It's really thick and webby and while it might not be traditional per se, it really gives it a nice look. So, once you figure out one that'll work, go ahead and double the hackle. And trim off some of it to tie in easily. and wax your thread pretty good to help hold on to this section. This is really important because throat hackles seem to like to pull out the most out of any of them. And I make sure there's a good layer of wax thread right there so that it has something to bite onto. Go ahead and tie that in kind of hard to see but I'm really crowding the head here it's it looks like there's not going to be enough room to get another throat hackle and then the wing on but there will I tie it on the near side so that the shortest wraps or fibers go on the first wrap on top of the shank so that way you get the majority of your thicker fibers on your next wrap could have uh, stripped off a lot of that excess there, but just didn't do it. So get it tied off. And after you trim it, the, the longer waist pieces, you can just kind of pull them out. They'll come with the hackle. And then just tighten up again, just so you don't have any loose thread there. tie it off good and tight and then trim out any bits of the the front of the hackle that were there again I just spread the fibers out and rub them with my finger a bit to spread it clearing away for the wing I like to do it after each hackle that I put on so that way it, it's ready for the next one and the some of the fibers will move back up in but I find it easier if you do them each on their own instead of waiting to the very end to spread them out so make sure everything's sitting pretty like I said that's pretty webby so once it's brushed out it'll look a lot better so go ahead and pre prepare your teal, pintail, widgeon, whatever you want to use for the body and or for the throat hackle, sorry. Measure up the barbs and make sure they're good. I get right up to the tip there. Spread out just so you have a few fibers to tie in at the tip. And I'll remove some more of the waist end like I should have done on the first throat. Go ahead and double that. 
I'm using a pretty fibrous piece that doesn't have nearly as much webbing as some of the hackles do. And that tends to help out a lot because that stuff is super sticky and uh, if there's much web it'll just won't look very good. So try to find the sparsest one you can. And then a few good wraps to hold that in. Take the tip out. The stems on these like to roll around all weird, so just be forceful with it and make it bend to your will. What you really don't want to do is tie off on that really thick, heavy section at the base. You want to make sure you're tying off your hackle on the thinner, narrower section of the stem. So again, a few good wraps to hold it down. And then some of the fibers will be kind of tweaked at a weird angle. And usually it's because they're, they're being pushed back up and around. So grab those and pull them back down into the place that you want them. So now I'm just tying on a new section of black silk. Again, probably about three feet. And trimming out the waist pieces of thread. I really like to get a fairly level section to start my head off with. Just helps the, the tippets to sit better, I think. Different strokes for different folks. Do whatever works for you. I take the tippets from the sides of the neck, preferably the ones that have a bit of curvature to them. They just, uh, especially when you're doing this kind of ranger-esque sort of mis mixed wing like I'm going to do here, I just think that the curvature that the side feathers have is very pleasing, so try to get those and strip off roughly what you think you're going to need to remove and I'm using bigger tippets than I would say you should normally use just because I like the the thick wide tips for this ranger style kind of mixed wing thing. So and then once you got them roughly what you think, ch check them against the fly. Obviously I hadn't removed enough so I got to do some more. I'm just kind of flattening the stems there so that way they don't fight each other as much and you can get a better idea of how they're going to sit. So sometimes if you're really lucky they'll uh, go straight on perfectly for you so I just try them first, see how they sit. Making sure that they're sitting directly on top of the shank is crucial. And those look like it, and then I touch them on the butts and they spring back up where they would normally sit because of the bulk behind them them from the throat so go ahead and go through and put a little bit of a z-bend in it I just use my fingernails and make sure they're sitting right and then put the z-bend into it doesn't have to be a whole lot Make sure they're sitting square. Sometimes you have to tweak the stems a little bit just so they'll sit flush with each other. And 
and then try tying them in again. It is absolutely crucial, crucial that your stems don't cross. You want your far side stem on your far side and your near side on your near side. If they overlap, they'll have huge problems and it always seems to happen right at the very end of the fly. They'll just all of a sudden spring out of place and screw up all your hard work. So make sure they're on top of the shank and side by side. And they're sitting about where I want. So I'm just going to really reef down on those. You want to put very good tight wraps over that. Don't want those moving at all. I trim a little short so that way I just don't have three inches of stem sticking out the front of the fly. Now I lick my finger and put quite a bit of uh, saliva on there just to stroke those down and give them a little bit more of a curvature that I like. So now we're going to prepare our wing. Uh, there's quite a bit of materials in this fly so you got to be careful and judicious with your application of which materials. I think I used maybe 20 fibers total uh, for the larger heavier stuff like you know golden pheasant, macaw, uh, turkey and I tend to use more of the natural colored stuff than the colored stuff so when you're doing the macaw like I think I use two body or two sections and then you know I would increase that uh, that number on the natural material so I'd use like four or five or six even depending on the bulk of the material like Amherst has thicker stems so you know you can use less of that compared to say a golden pheasant or even the, the turkey so just go ahead and cut out your your slips obviously one from each side like I said there's quite a few materials here and then once you uh, get all your heavy stuff cut out like your turkey and bustard and golden pheasant etc you're gonna cut out your softer fiber materials like your pintail and uh, summer duck and parrot too I use quite a bit of parrot because it's a awesome and B not as heavy as some of the other materials so you can use a fairly light, wide swath of that but you're gonna use probably I would say almost twice the thickness of your colored materials in your uh, softer fiber materials like the teal and stuff or pintail whatever you're using that stuff if you use thin sections of it it tends to get lost in the mix and plus it's really pretty so use it so now we have a clump of wing material